My only hope is we get good weather. <laughs> Honest to God, after the last two years, that's my only hope because I know we have everything else. We have all the, th the things in place. Our, our staff is very strong, very experienced. Our volunteers the same. Uh, the site we've, perf I wouldn't say we've perfected, but we're getting better at it. We we re-energized the festival in two ways this year for our audience. We spent a lot more money on talent. So if people are saying, "Oh, this is a really good lineup," there's a reason we we increased our let me see we increased our budget by maybe by 20 percent on the talent budget but we didn't charge anymore so people kind of noticed there's a, an increase in quality mm -hmm. you know that's where the hosier and affording blue rodeo and bruce coburn and and brandy carlisle there's a lot of names in there we were a little bit nostalgic but you can be on your 40th we'll freshen it up again next year i mean we get a lot of praise but sometimes i don't know if people know how re i don't know if the average attendee here knows how good the Edmonton Folk Festival is. The only way you'll know that is by going to other festivals. Mm -hmm. But I have a long list. I, I, I know it sounds very, you know, pat ourselves on the back. But I have a long list of Grammy Award winners. People like John Prine, Mary Chapin Carpenter. Folk legends like uh, Donald Lunny from Ireland who've told me this is the best festival they've ever played. Mary Chapin Carpenter wrote me a letter and said it wasn't just the best festival I've ever been at. That's the best weekend I've ever had in my life. So I don't know what happened, but she connected with Rose Cousins, they become friends, they tour together sometimes. So a lot of, a lot of magic can happen at a festival because it's like a big convention of musicians. Everything's in place. Our audience is regenerated. We have at least a thousand more people per day coming down this year versus last year. So that's as a result of the two things we did in spending a lot more and keeping the price the same, which was a risk. and you know, doing that new 18 to 24 ticket for 149, because that's 1,400 people. I would say probably 700 of those people are new to the festival, I would say. I remember talking to one of the chieftains, and he said, hey, you know, I look at Canadian folk festivals, how come they don't have any traditional music there? And I said, well, yeah, we do. We have, you know, Quebec and Maritimes and singer-songwriters, and we reflect a lot of provinces. He says, no, 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 traditional music. And what I realized, you know, he was thinking, the chieftains, right? That's, there was chieftains in Ireland as well. And he was actually talking about indigenous people. That's tr the traditional music of Canada, and of course it is. And I kind of went, whoa, wait a second. He's got a real point there. It's not, it's not the history of 200 years. It's the history of 5,000 years, 10,000 years. And that's what we want to reflect. And I think we've made a really good attempt at it this year, a really good engagement, and I think it's going to get stronger. Uh, I'm just happy with every aspect of the festival. I'm really happy that the you know, we were heading down in, in sales, but, but we've re-energized ourselves and, uh, this year. And uh, so I'm really happy with that too, because it takes the financial pressure off. Um, so I can't think of an area that's got me really concerned right now.